very inspirational stuff. So, um, so what about Grails? What about great technologies? Um, what is the state of our whatever we're going to call it? Um, so you're probably all familiar with uh, Pivotal. I'm not sure if that's their actual logo, but I think it's close. Um, so uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, I left Pivotal before Pivotal dumped uh, Grails and Groovy, mostly because of my frustrations with the way that they were uh, treating and mistreating uh, Grails and Groovy. Um, so I'm sure you're all very aware of the fact that uh, they stopped funding and supporting Grails and Groovy just about a year ago. Um, so that was sad news and made me very nervous about the future of Grails, to be honest. Um, I had a sense that Groovy would, would of course, survive. Uh, Groovy is a language. It's used in a wide range of, of uh, technologies, um, and it's, it's uh, clearly going to go forward. Um, but Grails is more of a niche. It's, it's got a lot of usage, but it, it seemed to me that it was very, very possible that Grails would just fade away. And that, of course, made me sad because I've spent a lot of, times, a lot of time working with Grails. I've gotten pretty good at it. I've invested a lot of my life in it. And to um, have to sort of give that up and not be able to use that would, would be uh, unfortunate. Um, so I was very excited um, when Groovy um, was accepted at Apache. It's, it's, uh, and that has been a great move, a great transition. I think that's been mostly uh, a very positive thing. They've, uh, the numbers are, are, are up even since then. Uh, Guillaume uh, did, this, did a blog post on that. Uh, just recently, just I think last week or the week before, the Tavi uh, rankings came out. And this is, these are weird numbers. I mean, it's, if you look at the, the numbers, it's uh, Object Pascal and Pascal are, are really high up in the rankings, which I don't get. I don't know anyone who uses Pascal. Um, so I, I'm not sure how valid these numbers are. So they're not, a, not necessarily a great metric, but it's definitely interesting uh, information. And for Groovy to go up from 82 to 17 is a very positive uh, state of affairs. And then, of course, I was very excited to learn in April that uh, OCI had uh, hired uh, Jeff Brown and, and Graham Rocher uh, and were taking over Grails to be the new home of Grails. So for those, oh, those of you who don't know, it wasn't sort of a co coincidence. Um, OCI was where Jeff Brown worked when Jeff started working on Grails. Uh, he was using Groovy to, uh, in his work and he was a principal developer uh, in St. Louis at, at OCI. And he's, of course, stayed in contact with them uh, since he left there. So he left OCI to form G21 with Guillaume and Graham and the other guys. So that was a consulting company that was formed to do training consulting for Grails and Groovy. That was purchased by SpringSource. SpringSource was purchased by VMware. VMware and EMC uh, splintered off parts of, of uh, the companies to form Pivotal. So that's how Grails and Groovy ended up at our good friend uh, Pivotal. So then in, uh, on June 1st, they announced that Colin Harrington and Dave Klein had been hired, which is, again, very exciting news. So I should mention that uh, we all uh, worked remotely, so none of us are co-located. And uh, so the only time I would see uh, the other people that I work with in person, we, of course, talk regularly online, but the only time I'd actually see my coworkers would be at conferences like this. And so, you know, once or twice, maybe a year, we'd actually get together in person and, and it'd be great to actually have these great conversations and, and drink some beers and, and uh, but every time I would see uh, Graham, and this wasn't intentional, but eventually the conversation on my part would, would uh, come around to, Graham, when are we gonna be able to hire more developers? Because Grails, the Grails core team has always been very small, really way too small. And it just always seemed obvious to me that if we were able to add more developers, then we could add more features, fix bugs, grow the platform, and then that would make the platform more attractive, we would get more users, that would generate, generate more revenue, uh, we'd get more training dollars, we'd get more 
uh, consulting dollars, we get more users, then that would allow us to then hire more developers. And this cycle, it just, it just, I'm not a business person. I'm not uh, any, any, any good at this stuff. I'm just a, a programmer. But um, that seemed just so obvious to me that that would make sense. Um, the folks at uh, VMware and Pivotal didn't, didn't agree, however. So uh, we, did, we did get one uh, person that we could add. We, we hired uh, Cedric Shempo, which was great. Uh, and he was hired to add the type checked and the compile static. But that was a rare add to the team. And it took my leaving Pivotal for us to be able to even hire uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Larry Hutari. Um, so it was very exciting for me to see that Grails had doubled the size of their team. Of course, the team was actually larger than uh, that because internally there are people at OCI um, that aren't so publicly uh, working on Grails. But uh, so that was exciting stuff. And then um, later on uh, in October, some guy named Soren, I think he might be involved somehow with. Uh, the uh, great conference uh, was hired. That was a very positive thing. And, and Alvaro Sanchez, who's worked on uh, security plugins, uh, he was hired. And then uh, they then they announced even more names. Allison Figus, she's one of the uh, great ladies uh, folks. Ryan Vanderwerf, uh, Dave's, Dave Klein's son, Zach, Jim Clee, Don Murtaugh. So there was this huge stream of announcements in this very short period of time. And so we went from this tiny little team that to, that was really frustratingly small to a huge team, a relatively huge team. So uh, very exciting stuff. So of course, the Grail 3 was released before the, uh, the end of the Pivotal support. So that was a, a promising move. But if then things fizzled, then that would be too bad. But um, I am much more excited, much more enthusiastic about the future of Grails and, the, of course, the great technologies now, um, primarily thanks to, to OCI. So these guys, I'm really, really excited that these folks had the wisdom to do what I was saying we should have been doing all along, which is to fund this and you know, uh, grow it, make it a platform, and, and uh, make money off of it. So uh, the, the roadmap, this is, of course, not cast in stone. This is not everything here is definitely going to happen, but Graham has been pretty good. Graham and Jeff have been, have been pretty good about keeping a, a, a roadmap up um, and exciting stuff in 3.1. Of course, there's, there's a release candidate of 3.1 available, so we can try a lot of the stuff out now. Uh, there's already plans for what's going to happen in, in uh, 3.2. So the future of, of Grails is um, coming along pretty well. So let me talk about Grails 3 a bit, because uh, I don't think a lot of people have been using it yet, because it's, it's quite different. Uh, the migration path is not trivial. It's, it's never been easy, to be honest, to upgrade uh, Grails versions. It's always been a small to large amount of work. Um, and of course, Grails 2 to Grails 3 is a, a, a big change. It turns out, turns out though, that uh, for the developer experience, it's quite similar. So even though under the hood, massive refactorings were done, a lot of Grails code just completely went away because Grails is now based on Spring Boot. So a lot of the stuff that they've been doing is now, of course, Grails was already are always based on Spring MVC and other technologies, Hibernate and, and Site Mesh and all of that. But now, Boot, which is similar to Grails in that it's a very opinionated framework that, that does a lot of uh, work for you. Uh, so we, Grails leverages that heavily, but it also then adds all the Grails niceness on top of that. So um, even though under the hood it's radically different, the experience for us is, is very much the same. If you look at the directory structure of a Grails app in Grails 3 versus Grails 2, it looks very much the same. You've got a source, source directory, you've got Grails app conf, Grails app domain, Grails app services, so structurally, it's, it's very similar. Of course, there are some non-trivial differences, and I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, so Grails 3.0 uses Spring Boot 1.2, and 3.1 uses 1.3. Uh, Spring 4.1 is being used in, in uh, 3.0, and 4.2 is being used in Grails 3. So latest Spring, all the new features, all the new passion that's there. Because Spring Boot has uh, it's a lot of momentum there, a lot of uh, exciting stuff being done in, with Spring Boot. And they're getting. I saw some tweets recently, I don't know the numbers, but staggering numbers of downloads of Spring Boot. It's, so that is very much a thing that's going to be going forward. Groovy 2.4, so Groovy keeps getting better and better every release. Groovy 2.5 uh, is being, uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's in beta yet, but it's actively being developed. 
So one of the exciting things about Grails 3 is the concept of profile. So that was something that we were always struggling with with Grails because Grails is great, but it's big, right? It's, you get huge war files, relatively speaking. Um, huge, I mean, not gigantic, but I mean 60, 80, 100 megs. That's, that's a big war file. That takes quite a while to upload. Uh, it uses a lot of memory, unfortunately. That's, there's, there's some uh, pretty non-trivial overhead there. Having a meta class for every class involves some overhead. I mean, all the co there's some cost to all of that uh, dynamicness. So what we always wanted to do was have some way of maybe having a smaller version of Grails. And that was the idea that was percolating for a long time. So one of the plans for Grails 3 was to somehow make it more modular. So the profile concept w w was what was added. So what we were hoping was that we could have a, a, a very, like, really the smallest possible version of Grails and then a whole bunch of different options and then a profile that was the big Grails that we're all used to and then anything in between. So, and that's exactly what, what we have now. So we have a handful of, pl of uh, profiles that are available now. There's also in 3.1 a profile for creating profiles. Um, so we've always been able to modularize applications with plugins. Plugins have a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different ways you can use plugins. Of course, there's the traditional thing of, you know, there's shared functionality that you can release and then I can create a security plugin or I can create an asset pipeline plugin or I can create a whatever plugin and I can share that with you guys and, and you can, um, take advantage of the work that I've done, I can take advantage of the work that you've done. But these profiles allow us to even to, to do that also. So profiles end up being jar files. They're published, just like uh, plugins. And so there will always be these sort of core profiles that are available through Grails, but then you can create your own. You can create your own internal ones that no one ever sees except your, your company, and then you can share them. So really interesting stuff. So profiles, you know, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail of that because you can, you can use this and read the documentation, but. Uh, they come with uh, pre-configured uh, settings, pre-configured dependencies, commands, structure. And for me, one of the most exciting profiles that's out there and being developed is the Angular JS uh, profile. I'm a terrible UI developer, so anything that, that makes it easier for me to create fairly good-looking UIs on top of the, the, the uh, underlying structure that I'll actually be good at is, is, is great. So a lot of really great work, Craig Burke and uh, Jim Clay and a bunch of other folks have been doing some really awesome work on that. So a huge thanks to them for, for doing that and then getting it into Grails and really actively supporting it. So one thing that isn't really there yet is uh, documentation for how to use that, uh, within, particularly within Grails, but that'll come, uh, definitely. So the REST API profile is, is, is a really good one. So that's not necessarily the smallest profile, the smallest Grails, but that's a much more lightweight uh, Grails. So that's targeted at, targeted at microservices, that sort of uh, thing. So uh, a much smaller version of Grails that doesn't have all the features, but then also doesn't have all the overhead so that if you want to have a smaller, more focused application, especially you know, with a microservice ar ar architecture, you really want a small thing that does one thing well, right? And lots of those that talk to each other. So now we'll be able to, to do that uh, fairly, fairly well with, with Grails. So, um, and then the plugin profiles and that sort of thing. So uh, traits, where Grail3 is actively using uh, traits, which is uh, really interesting stuff. So there have been a few different mix-in approaches. There was the old mix-in, which was more uh, Metaclass based, which is very buggy. And then there's the current mix-in, which is more AST based, which is, which is great. But now traits are sort of like Java 8, you know, the functional interfaces with uh, default implementations of, of methods, but it's even better than that, of course. So it's basically an interface, but it's got behavior also. So if you look at Grails, um, if you look at the, if you look under the hood a bit at the, uh, how does a controller, for example, get methods like render and redirect and properties like params and, and response and request and all that, it turns out that that's mixed in to the class at, at compile time. And so that was always done with, since Grails 2 with, with uh, heavy use of, of uh, ASTs at compile time. Well, now, instead of that, uh, we're using traits. Uh, so much more, uh, much more performant, lighter weight, uh, better autocomplete, better, better, just better in, in, in every way. Uh, GORM 5 also, which is uh, really exciting stuff, a major refactoring of the whole GORM suite heavily uses tra uh, traits. Uh, so that was very heavily refactored. That's in the RC stage. That's not something that's just gonna work with Rails 3. 
that should work. My understanding is that that works. I haven't tried it, but that should work with Rails 2 also. So that's really cool stuff. Got support for Hibernate 3, although you're kind of crazy to use Hibernate 3 at this point because Hibernate 4 is kind of the standard and Hibernate 5 is, is, uh, is out and available now. But support for the latest MongoDB and Neo4j and Cassandra. Um, Gantt is going away, uh, which is good and bad. I like Gantt. I, I got pretty good at it, but um, like everything, we must proceed. And, and, uh, and the future is, of course, uh, more uh, smarter, better build tools like, like uh, Gradle. So Gradle is a terrible build tool, but all build tools are terrible, and it's the best of a bunch of terrible build tools. So uh, could, we could, could be worse. We could be using SPT, I suppose. Um, so uh, Gorm5 even has its own uh, little website, so definitely check that out. Um, that's, this is really exciting stuff for me. I Obviously, uh, persistence and, and security are two of the things that I've, I've worked on uh, quite a bit. So through boot, we're now able to, to uh, create, to very easily create runnable jar files that have an embedded container with, the, you know, by default Tomcat, but you can also use Jetty or Undertow or, and of course, you can extend that and, you know, use whatever uh, server you wanted to. I suppose you could probably embed uh, WebLogic if you, if you really wanted to. Um, so, and that again is, is something that really enables microservices because instead of deploying it to a standalone server that you have to install, having just this jar file that's runnable. It's pretty exciting stuff. So I had created the, the standalone plugin because that was an idea that, that we had talked about for, for a long time. That, you know, on the mailing list, people were asking for something like that uh, because people had used stuff like um, uh, Jenkins, right? So Jenkins, you, you can get a war file version that you can install to a server, but, but uh, one of the ways that you can install it is that runnable jar file, which is really nice because you can double click it in Windows or you can Java dash jar and it's got that embedded web server, so they wanted that for Grails, and so I did that. So that's good news for me because now I don't have to support the uh, standalone plugin going forward, so uh, less work for me, which is a good thing. So uh, filters are something that we've had in Grails, and those are going away, so they're currently supported. You have to uh, move them to, I'll talk about this in a bit, but you have to move them from the conf directory into the controller directory for them to work. Um, but those are really deprecated. They're gonna be removed uh, probably for 3.1 and then uh, released as a separate plugin, which you can then install if you really want to use filters. But what you really want to do is convert them to interceptors, which are a much, uh, basically the same functionality. You've got the before hook, the after hook, and the after view hook. So the same sort of structure, but much, much, it's, it's a much smarter design. Um, and it's much more likely that you can be able to apply compile static to it, so you can have a, a much, much, much better code. So that's, that's really good stuff. I'll be honest, I mean, the IDE situation is not uh, ideal, to say the least. Um, Pivotal uh, abandoned development of GGTS. So, uh, so there really isn't a great option. Of course, there's IntelliJ, but the, 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 in, the community edition, which is, which is great, has a ton of functionality and will get you pretty far with Grails. It really, it's really missing a lot of the stuff that, that we, we kind of need. Um, and the ultimate version is a bit pricey. So, and there is NetBeans, but NetBeans is NetBeans. So that's an unfortunate uh, state of affairs, and I don't, to be honest, I don't really know what the future looks like for that. Um, so, but you don't have to use an ID, uh, IDE, of course. You can use uh, text editors. You can get pretty far with uh, upgrades, and, but a lot of plugin upgrades. So. I, I've been trying, I've been thinking about maybe doing some blog posts or some sort of, we do have some information in, in the reference documentation on, on upgrading, but um, I've been thinking about, you know, trying to get information out on, on the process for doing this. And uh, so I, I wanted to kind of summarize some of the things that I've, I've picked up from my work for upgrading applications and, and plugins. Um, so, and this is not at all detailed, and I will try to, to get some more, much more detailed information available uh, hopefully soon, but Basically, the general process is going to be to create a new application in the version of Grails that you want to use, 3.0 or 3.1. Application.properties is no longer used. Um, so historically, that had the, the plugins that, that were installed. That, of course, a long time ago moved to the build config. So really, the only important thing in application.properties is the version of Grails, and that's moved because uh, you know that's, that's inside of the, the Gradle files now. Um, your dependencies from build config go into the build.gradle, 
And there is a bit of a learning curve there because if you haven't used Gradle before, Gradle's great, but it's weird to get started with. It's a, it's a kind of a strange paradigm, so you've got to spend some time understanding Gradle. You don't have to be an expert, but you need to understand the basics. So it's not a cut and paste. You know, you've got to move that over there and then make the, the required changes. Uh, and of course, that you are not at all guaranteed that that's just going to work because some of the some plugins that you're using may not have been ported yet because there is a porting process that that has to happen. Although a lot of the, a lot of the uh, plugins have been ported, plugins probably need a settings.gradle because the 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 project name defaults to the directory name, and you know so you, you can specify you can override the, the property name there. Um, you're going to have to move your config.groovy settings to application.yaml. Uh, but another thing that I, I want to formally talk about blog post or something like that is um, encouraging everyone to stop using application.yaml because what small benefits it has are negligible and it's a really frustrating experience. And being able to do things in a Groovy file, it makes so much more sense. So um, I'm trying to just migrate everything to application.groovy because you can use them both. It's not a super smooth thing. There's some weird things that can happen if you use uh, application YAML and application.groovy. But if you just switch everything to application.groovy, everything works. You've, you can do code, you can do loops, you can do if checks, you can, you can do whatever you want. So definitely I'm, I'm strongly advocating not using application.yaml. And hopefully in a future version of Grails, we'll just make that switch automatically and, and stop using the YAML file. The log4j configuration uh, moves from config.groovy to logback.groovy. And of course, it's no longer log4j, it's, it's logback. Logback is a, is a really cool Logging framework, and I had developed a plugin for logback. It's so I'm really glad that Grails now uses that. The data source.groovy settings have to get moved into your application.groovy. Um, like I said, filters are supported, but you need you really want to convert those to interceptors. I missed a line break there, but the IETN uh, directory services controllers domain classes. A lot, most of those directories, you don't have to do anything at all. It just works. There's no changes required in most of those directories, which is great. Services, you don't really have to do anything. Controllers. Uh, all that stuff. Um, you can still use GDoc format for application uh, documentation, but that's much more popular in plugins. But I strongly encourage everyone to switch to ASCII doc. There's a lot of plugins out there that use it. All my plugins use it, so you can use those, steal that uh, code for for uh, for uh, ASCII doc format. ASCII doc is is great. Uh, you have to move your source around to f to f uh, follow the the Gradle conventions. Um, as you're doing that. If you had written stuff in Java because of performance or for whatever reason, you don't necessarily have to convert it. If it works, you know, leave it the way it is. But consider comp converting that to Groovy, but use compile static so that you get elegant, compact Groovy, but the same performance as Java. Uh, you have to update your git ignore. You have to move your test folders around a bit. But a lot of the testing stuff still works. You know, we still have unit testing support, integration test support. It's slightly different, but uh, we still have functional tests. You definitely want to be switch to Spock if you're not using Spock yet. You want to use Jeb if you're not using Jeb yet. Um, if you're if, you, if it's a plugin project, your pl your plugin descriptor has to move from the root directory into a proper source directory, and then there's some changes you have to make inside of the plugin descriptor. You have to extend the base class. You have to convert the closures to to methods. Um, if you're using the resources plugin, even in Grails 2, stop doing that. Use uh, asset pipeline in Grails 2 and in Grails 3. It's much better, much more actively. It, Resources is not developed at all. Asset Pipeline is very actively developed. Definitely the way to go. Gantt has to get convert, Gantt scripts have to be converted over to the new uh, scripting command format. That's a, unfortunately a non-trivial process. Um, so again, we need some more documentation on that process, th those things. Um, URL mappings.groovy has to move. Bootstrap.groovy moves from conf to the init directory. Test your application aggressively. Have some beers and uh, then profit. So then uh, life is good. So that's a very quick overview of the upgrade process. Um, I will try to get more information out there. We'll try to get more information in the documentation. There are no books available for Grails 3 yet, but there have been just some discussions on on updating one of the existing Grails 2 books to Grails 3. So that'll be good. So we'll have that resource. Um, no promise on any timeline for that, but hopefully that'll be soon. Um, so. I'm gonna running out of time, so I'm gonna I'll make this available online, so so you, you can uh, we can see all the stuff. But uh, the the one of the things that's been holding up uh, migration to Grails 3, of course, has been the plugins, 
and because it's been a non-trivial process to upgrade them, uh, the structure changed. Um, I was one of the big <laughs> problems in that space because Spring Security is, is the Spring Security Core plugin is one of the more popular ones, and that I know held back a lot of people from migrating. So that was finally in August. I got the first uh, release of that out, and now we've got the 2.0 GA releases out and, and the 3.0 releases out. I, I did a, I really buckled down in November and December and just really just paid off years, literally years of technical debt, and finally got those up to, so they're really stable and, and have a lot of bugs fixed. And, and um, now everything's published to Bintray, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I just bring up there because I like the way that looks. That's a lot of my, my security plugins. Um, there is a plugin out there that will actually migrate, part, do a partial migration from Grails 3 to Grails 3. Don uh, Murtaugh did this, uh, so that can get you pretty far. Um, this is a new site that was just announced yesterday. It's a, it's because we don't have any support in the Grails.org portal site for Grails 3 plugins. It's very frustrating because it's it's very Grails 2 focused. Um, there is a way in Grails 3.1 to configure your plugin processing uh, pu publishing to notify the the uh, the portal, but uh, Matt Sheehan and uh, Eric Helgeson and Bobby Warner worked on this. The uh, Agile Orbit guys did this uh, really awesome site. So it's it's scraping, it's using the Bintray APIs to create this really slick website. So it's grails-plugins.org. They have a, t a Twitter account where they'll announce uh, Grails 3 releases. Really exciting stuff. And of course, this is being discussed as being mer uh, as a candidate to merge into, into the grails.org website. So for now, this is a standalone site, but a great resource. Really excited that this is available now. So what is the state of our union? I think the state of our union is groovy. Thank you.